They're making our food out of people. Next thing, they'll be breeding us like cattle for food. You gotta tell them. You gotta tell them. I promise, Tiger. I promise. I'll tell the exchange. You tell everybody. Listen to me, Hatcher. You gotta tell them. Silent Green is people! I get the essentials going first. Welcome back to another episode of Front Porch Friday. Man, I've been out almost two weeks this time. 13 days, I think. Spent last weekend in um, Michigan on the St. Joe River at a campground on Burien Springs, I think the little town's called. Man, that was so nice. Everybody back here at home was dealing with 100, 102 degree weather. <laughs> I was waking up 51 degrees that one morning. Oh, it slept so good. So, man, there's a lot went on last week, wasn't there? Um, there again, I didn't really pay no. I don't pay attention to news when I'm on the road. And boom, man! I, I mean, I come home, the Supreme Court's dropped the bomb on uh, Roe versus Wade. Praise God. Um, and uh, struck down several gun control things. I don't think that is as big as win as a lot of people think it is for from conservatives. Because Clarence, or one of them, I believe it was Clarence Thomas, kind of left the door open saying, well, you, it doesn't mean you can't ban guns in sensitive places so you know what's going to happen now every place is going to be a sensitive place um, parks grocery stores movie theaters basically everything's going to be labeled a sensitive area and we'll have to go through all this crap again it might take another 20 years and by then who knows what kind of supreme court we're going to have. so I don't think it is as big as as what a lot of conservatives think it when the, a lot of conservatives think it was. When Biden passed his gun control bill. Oh my gosh! Oh God willing, it will save lives. Uh, dude, you've taken more lives than probably most guns have, or you know, probably more than most guns have. Let's just leave it at that. Um. That's kind of a vague from what I can see. I've read like half a dozen articles. And none of them can tell you what the bill consists of. But they all say it was, has, has um, um, measures in it to help um, schools and mental health. It's kind of like a side note. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop the truck. Hit them air brakes. Let's back up. Beep, 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 beep. Mental health. Why would a gun control bill need a mental health measurement in it? Oh, wait a minute. Could it be because every mass shooter, or at least like 99% of them, especially the young ones, have been on some kind of a mental psychotic drug? Ooh, I know. Legal prescribed psychotic drug. Hmm. Oh, we don't want to talk about that. Let's talk about the guns, man. Cars have killed more kids than guns have. Should we ban cars? Well, that's just ridiculous, Don. It's ridiculous, but cars are not a constitutional right. Just saying. There was a reason our forefathers put the Second Amendment, made it number two. Well, it's just outdated. Still works. Still a lot of countries want it, except for the parts that free speech and uh, right to bear arms. They, they don't like that stuff. 
So anyway, I, I'm not talking about any of that this week, but I will probably upcoming weeks. Uh, seen a video with Jeremy Mayfield. Uh, really want to get into that as an example of how our government works. But not this week. Uh, this week. This week. This week we're going to talk about, I don't know how to explain it really. It's what I really think. If you're talking about a crap hit the fan scenario, I really think will happen. Before the zombies, before China invades, man, I, I, you read those prepper forms and you get all kinds of stuff, man. But I'm pretty much a practical person. Things have to make sense to me. And so, there's been a 20-year lull since I've been over the road. Late 90s, I ran horse trailers and cargo trailers all across the country. Uh, then kind of got out of it. Went, well, I kind of did get out of it when I got married and started a family. And now that my daughter's off to school and I'm divorced, even though I miss my little paradise out here, I went back over the road because... I really like that. And there's a couple things that really struck me. I mean, like, two by six in the face struck me. Especially this last week. I spent this last week running a lot. Uh, rural Wisconsin roads, rural Indiana, Illinois, Ohio roads. Man. And... The coming apocalypse or the coming crap hit the fan stuff. Um, you know, I, I start thinking about that a lot. And one of the things that is really freaking blew me away is the huge population increase in 20 years. It, I'm going to have to look it up. I did. I've done no research for this video. But I'm going to. <laughs> Typically, you do research for a video before you talk about something like this. It's a beautiful morning. I can research it when it's 100 degrees and I got the air conditioner going inside. So, But exponentially just... <clears throat> um, I've seen it as early as, as... Well, when I moved to Houston, prime example. Uh, there was a little crossroads, 1488 and 2978, something like that. My little town that didn't even exist called Egypt. Um, there was, <laughs> at that little crossroads, there was one, uh, a shell convenience store on one side and a jack-in-the-box on the other. And, you know, I'm like, there's an odd place for a jack-in-the-box out here in the middle of no place. The homes around there were on like five acres or more ranchettes, like they like to call them, you know, huge homes, uh, wealthy people. And um, in the eight years I lived there, that went from a little podunk, nothing out there, surrounded by ranchettes, to basically... A small city. You look at it now, six lane highway both ways. But within eight years that I lived there, it went from that to having Home Depot, to having all the shopping malls, to, to more subdivisions, you know, uh, these large builders going in, buying as much land as they could, putting subdivisions. It just exploded. And I thought, okay, that's Houston, you know. Well, one thing I've seen since I've been back on the road is all the, the several new interstates went in. Um, just construction, home building everywhere you look. Places that used to be podunkville like this, and now small cities. Uh, when I used to do a lot of work up in Elkhart, 
uh, Goshen area. And when you got off that, what is that, Highway 30, 31, something 30th, something coming from South Bend, you would get off the Elkhart exit, you would turn left and go north to Elkhart, or you would turn right and go south to Goshen. Nothing out there. There was nothing out there for miles around. Now, I was over a couple weeks ago, and I'm like, crap, I didn't know where I was. This place is blew up. There was more and more people in this country. And, you know, our sizes of our family is getting smaller, but we're still exponentially growing. And the one thing I noticed driving through all those breadbasket states, more and more of that ground is being farmed with corn. And more and more signs like one, one of the kind of like the aftershave thing where you had this sign here, down the road you had that sign, and it finally made a sentence. Well, basically they were saying, we're... You, you can depend on foreign oil or you can depend on fuel grown right here. You know, ethanol. Like, you know, ethanol is one of the biggest travesties ever pushed on the American public. But, you know, that's what happens when you got good lobbyists paying them millions of dollars and pay, paying off politicians. You get crap like that. But anyway, let's not chase that squirrel today. So... Okay, let me get this right. More and more ground is being allocated to grow corn for ethanol and other products, which by the way, just so you know, there are companies whose sole purpose, the only reason they exist is to design and engineer new products that can be made from corn. Because corn generally, you know, relatively speaking, is a cheap crop to grow. That's how goes, oh, you don't know, man. Corn costs, man. Oh, corn. Compared to other shit. Oops, did I just say that? Other stuff. Corn is cheap to grow. That's why they grow it. Ethanol was one of those things that come out of that, unfortunately for us. Um, so, they, they, those companies exist to find things they can make with corn because corn is cheap. So we're taking away farm ground that could be used to feed, grow crops to feed us as well as the rest of the world. And we're turning that through subsidies, government subsidies, taxpayer subsidies, to grow ethanol and other crap that we really don't need. Well, eventually, and this is you know the whole point of my video, eventually, We're going to get to the point where we don't have enough farm ground to feed us. That's when the crap's going to hit the fan. Well, Don, we'll just stop growing corn for a year or two and grow food. It doesn't work that way. Corn may grow fast, but it doesn't grow overnight. And it's going to be hard to tell these corporate farmers to switch over to something growing food, they, they make less on because they don't get a government subsidy. What do you mean? I ain't going to turn my 40,000 acres into peas and potatoes and all that other stuff. Not when I can make three times as much with government subsidies growing corn. And I know what some of y'all say. Well, I just don't eat nothing but what I grow on my little farm. And that's all well and fine. But when those millions and millions of people who keep growing, keep growing, keep growing, keep growing, when they get hungry, guess where they're going to come? They're going to come to your house. They're going to be eating on your corn or your your garden. Well, I, I got 10,000 rounds all in a 30-round magazine. Just let them come. I've seen somebody on the prepping form. <laughs> you want a good laugh, go read some of the prepping stuff that, that go, comes across prepping forms. I don't know. Like, seriously? You may have 10, 20, 30,000 rounds all in 30 round magazines. But when those hungry people start coming, they're going to roll over you like a tide. <laughs> then they're going to have 30, 40,000 rounds, whatever, in 30 round magazines. 
you may get a couple of them, but you ain't going to get all, they're going to get you. And then they're going to take your food and your stuff. Because that's, you know, I, I crack up these people. Well, if it comes to that, man, I'm just going to go out in the woods and kill me deer. I can do that, man. You know how many other millions of people have that same freaking idea? Yes, everybody. Some of them, well, the government take care of us. Some of them will, but some of them's going, well, I just go out there and ask them for kill me a deer, man. Within a year or two, our herd deer will be gone when that happens, if that long. Yeah, we got a surplus of deer right now. I, granted, we do. But look what a small population back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, darn near wiped them out. And that was people using, you know, muzzle loaders and, and really, really like antiquated weapons did. Imagine now, okay, your deer ain't going to last because <laughs> that's going to be people from the cities and, and towns and everything. They're going to be poaching and, and probably doing 50 man drives and all. Uh, your deer ain't going to last. It cracks me up every time someone says that. Well, I'll just go out in National Forest kill me a deer. Yeah, well, you and half of Chicago. But to me, that, that worries me more than anything else right there. I, I don't think it would happen in my lifetime, but it probably will my my daughter's lifetime and your kid's lifetime. I mean, what are they going to do? Yeah, I can prep my, I got a whole year's worth of food. If that happens, it's going to take a hell of a lot more than a year to recover. There's going to be a lot of crap happening in that. I'm telling you, when people get hungry, <clears throat> you see what happens every time a hurricane hits a major city or, or some natural disaster like that. You see what they do when they, they start running out of food for a week or so. Imagine what they're going to do when they start running out of food for months. It is not going to be pretty. But yet we continue to grow. We continue to take farm ground away from food production and put it into producing ethanol and other crap that we don't need. <laughs> and then, or, or losing farm ground to subdivision. I see that a lot up there. We're taking a lot of ground out of food production and putting it elsewhere. What are you going to do? Well, we're just take a boat and load it up. Oh, yeah, that's going to work. You bet. You bet. Man, see, that, that's, that's, as far, not a zombie apocalypse or an invasion by UN troops or China or, you know, some, you know, something. I ain't gonna go there. I'm not gonna go there. Running out of food and having those masses of people start coming looking for something to eat is my concern. And I don't know how you prep against that. Oh, I got a bunker. I can stay underground for a year. It's not going to take a year to get it. it will, when that happens, if that happens, it will take a lot longer than a year to get it. Uh, and your year supply of food is going to get probably taken away from you. I mean, sh really, really short of, of being a, attacked by nukes by a foreign country and, and wiping out a lot of people. I just see this as a... I see this as a, a, a certainty. I, like I said, probably not my lifetime. Probably my daughter's lifetime, which, you know, who was it that said, was it Thomas Paine? No, I think it was somebody else said, you know, if there has to be war, let it happen in my lifetime so my children don't have to experience it. That's kind of way I am. If we're going to face something like that, let's do it now so I can help my kids and my friends and family do it. I don't know, I just don't know how you prep against something like that.
four wheeler through the woods. So I, I don't know, how, how do you prep it? Leave me some comments down below. Let me know what your thoughts are, but it's crazy, crazy. I cannot tell you how crazy it is to see some of these areas that 20 years ago there was nothing there and all of a sudden, they're cities. It's just, and it just keeps like a cancer or bad rash. It just keeps expanding, expanding, expanding. You know, even all the podunk towns around here, they're just, they're continuing to go out. Man, it is crazy. That's, that's your next apocalypse. That's where the zombies and the, all this <laughs> yeah man anyway uh that's what i want you to bring your attention something for you to be thinking about how you going to prep for that because i promise you when people get hungry they do desperate stuff i mean back in 2007 2008 i think it was when we had that financial hiccup and everything was going up price of food was going up man People were still making lower wages and you know around here I can think of probably just within a few months almost a dozen instances of, of, of people of, of ranchers losing cows they find them butchered out by, by the road that's what's gonna happen you got cows you're gonna feed some people until they're gone because when those people get hungry and they see old Betsy out there they ain't gonna think well she'll make a good milk cow she's gonna know that she's gonna make some hamburger right now or steak over a fire you know and really if you know what you're doing hell even if you don't know what you're doing you can cut meat off of off a cow pretty quick and but there were you know, people losing, and they, you know, people, you know, ranchers and stuff start trying to pull their cattle closer to their homes because people were just getting hungry, you know, not having the money for fuel and food and stuff, and they'd go out there and kill a cow or something. So, you know, you're going to have that stuff happen. How do you prep against something like that? Oh, I got I got a fifty caliber on my roof. Okay, okay, Rambo. <laughs> you run out, you run out of ammo sooner or later, or somebody else will take you out. Oh man, I tell you, I don't I don't know. Well, we'll we'll start a community and and it be like minded people and. Um, and we'll just all farm and, and guard each other and sh put our little buses around in circles. And Some of the ideas people come up with just, I mean, it's, you want a good read, go read some of those prepping forums on, on Facebook. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Not going to go there. I'll probably tick somebody off. So anyway, I just wanted to come at you today. And I'm going to try to have some um, research in here. You know, maybe some, if I can get my Google Earth up, do some comparisons between 20 years ago and now. And just see, it's not urban sprawl. Okay, news calls it urban sprawl. It, it, we're just slowly creeping out. No, it's exponentially a freaking tidal wave. Okay, it's a tsunami of people. You, you know, these people. Wow, I got twenty thousand rounds. It's all, all in thirty round magazine. It's going to be like trying to stop a tsunami with a surfboard. Hold the surfboard. Ah, I'll stop it. Let me know how that works out for you. It just, uh, I, I don't know how you predict against that. Um, like I said, when people get hungry, yeah, some of them die off. 
and yeah, the government, uh, you know, have their Sorient Green um, stations around for you to go to and get a little couple little squares of Sorient Green. <laughs> I saw you younger people going, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> go look that movie up. That scared the crap out of me as a kid. Still does, really. <laughs> and it's probably closer to being true now than when I was a kid. So, anyway, but, well, I got to get off here. It's so nice to have a cold front at the end of June where your high is 80 degrees. Where two days ago the high was 102. So, I got to get off here. Got to get weedy and get ready to go back out and, Maybe, maybe I'll take a few more days <laughs> off. That's a great thing about being an independent contractor. Uh, I've got a lot of the rough stuff done in weeks past, so I can take a few more days off. So anyway, thank y'all for watching. Something to think about. What are you going to do when these hordes of hungry people come after you or your kids? Well, I just don't know. Water world, I guess. I don't know. You know, I really don't. I've, and I've spent a lot of time thinking about this. I, what are you going to do when you live down on a little one-lane road and there's 40 people coming down because they heard that somebody lives down there. 40 people are, are hauling butt down that road to try to get, because they think you might have some food. Well, old so-and-so lives down that road because they're, they're, they're beating, torturing your, your neighbors and your neighbors are going to be blabbing. Well, I got down there. He's a prepper, and he's he's got a year's worth of food. We're gonna be gone to your house. Oh, I know, man. Okay, Rambo. Yeah, let's let me know how that works out for you. Works out good in the movies and and fictional books. Real life it ain't gonna work so well. Anyway, I got to get off and go to work. I thank y'all for watching. Just something for y'all to think about. Let me know what you think about it down below. So, I, it was a couple of days ago when I filmed the, the video. And then I went and looked up that snippet from Sorient Green. And what was freaky was, because that show used to scare me when I was, I, I, show scared me when I was a kid. And I think my brother. Uh, I had a lot to do with that. Yeah, he didn't scare me and stuff. But I found out that it was set in 2022. How freaky. Well, so anyway, I just thought I'd bring you all that and just remind you that eat your greens because we're running out of places to grow them. A little meaty. <laughs>